हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज थर्टी ऑफ मे एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द वीडियो इन द टुडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर अलोंग विद ऑल द आर्टिकल्स एंड द बैकग्राउंड एंड आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन ऑल्सो डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर सिनॉप्टिक नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब now first of all let's see the overview of newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper so here first article shah lands in manipur to initiate peace measures so for so many of the days these manipur protests are going on fine so that is the thing however uh, much important thing is not given in the article as of now then further moving on uh, uh, we have the regional issues and then these advertisement etc not important for the examinations fine moving on guys in this particular direction okay so largely the political articles and all such kind of a things have been given okay so directly will reach to editorial till the editorial page much relevant important articles have not been given now in editorial first article in delible imprint of fifth state in karnataka a good case study of karnataka that how civil societies has played an important role has been given we'll take this particular article uh, erdogan victory a triumph of ottoman glory so briefly guys uh, we'll take the article then a uh, symbol the substance okay now the article is talking about the inauguration of uh, the parliament building and it has been said that uh, uh, by installing the singol in the parliament building the uh, uh, government at the center has tried to link them with the tamil uh, with the tamil culture which could be a kind of a political thing and all such kind of issues okay so and all such kind of a uh, basically things have been given now guys in the particular article uh, basically it has been said that it is just a kind of a attempt to uh, basically flex uh the political ideology and all such things much important substance is not given in the article no need to go uh faster stronger it talks about the india which is going to install a new supercomputer we'll take this article for the exam from master of the roster to master of all judges we'll see this particular article the bjp outreach to shivites okay so by installing a singol uh, this particular thing which government is trying to connect with the shivites okay so uh, guys uh, for exam point of view much important thing is not given in this article political article. article how parliament has functioned will briefly take this article then the lack of teachers in higher education will take this article also uh, what india has done to curb hysterectomies will see this article uh, then the violence faced by healthcare professionals will take this article and uh, apart from that additionally will also take the recent kerala uh, decision okay then guys largely we have the political articles here no need to go too much in detail in these things okay here uh, there is one article uh, northeast to get its first vande bharat express so basically guys uh, here you see that the vande bharat express train will be started which will connect the guwahati in assam with the new jalpaiguri in west bengal okay and it will just take 5 and 1/2 hours of time okay so basically guys uh, when we talk about uh, the northeast northeast happens to be very important part of india and uh, northeast uh, basically we also now focusing on the development of northeast and providing the vande bharat train is a good step in the infrastructure upgradation of northeast moreover guys when we talk about india's look east and act east policy in the india's act east policy northeast plays a very important role with the integration with the south east asia and south asia okay so infrastructure upgradation here is a good thing okay bjp says new india emerged in 9 years under modi rule just the political remarks etc have been given no need to guys go too much in detail in this particular article okay uh, muslims lag behind all communities in higher education up shows worse decline says study okay so basically guys here it has been provided that uh, uh, basically here it uh, basically uh, all india survey on education has been conducted by ministry of education which which shows that basically there is a dismal picture of the community then further moving on guys in this particular direction isro's gslv rocket takes navigation satellite briefly we will see this nvs01 satellite that has been launched then after that uh, unp is keeping mission uh, to train women from asian will briefly take this particular article okay uh, kashmir's sufiana mosque revives the past so basically there was a sufiana uh, basically sufi music folk songs were there were uh, basically they were sang okay so there was an event which was uh, uh, there was an event that was taken up to pay tributes to the weavers of uh, 
का कश्मीर ओके देन फर्दर मूविंग ऑन एरडोगन कॉल्स फॉर यूनिटी विल सी दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल देन गाइज दिस रशिया यूक्रेन वॉर ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन देन कमिंग टू बिजनेस पेज जनवरी अप्रैल इम्पोर्ट फेल फ्रॉम चाइना जनवरी अप्रैल इम्पोर्ट्स फ्रॉम चाइना राइज फोर now uh, basically guys understand this particular thing i have told you many number of times that when we talk about the important articles for indian economy you are not required to track every month by month data with respect to the india's export performance current account deficits fine every month inflation is not to be tracked on a whole the state of indian economy is something that is important okay and basically uh, what is the performance throughout the entire financial year that is important those kind of a things are even which are important for the examination so month by month trends etc are not important then we have the corporate trends here okay ai has now moved from taxi face uh, now in a take off mode uh, uh, ai air india has moved from its taxi face now in a take off mode okay so basically guys we see this particular thing that after recent uh, basically disinvestment in air india that has been done and after that air india becoming privatized so now many of the reforms are going on so in this direction these things are there however much important substance is not given in this article then we have the sports page okay so this is guys all about it okay i hope that you have understood the overview okay uh, and uh, now moving to the the uh, detail uh, now moving to the articles one by one in detail okay now starting up guys in every class we start with a gs quotation and today we are going to take the quote from bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita has this beautiful message which says that detachment is not that you own nothing detachment is that nothing owns you okay detachment what is detachment detachment means that nothing should influence your behavior nothing should influence your uh, thoughts okay In adverse things should not behave should should not influence your thoughts negative things should not behave uh, should not affect your behavior so that is the true detachment that you are not moved by any fear you are not moved by any favor and this true detachment is very much important for the civil servants okay and you you guys also need to instill this value of detachment very important quotation for gs paper number 4 very important quotation for the gs paper number 4 ethics integrity and aptitude now uh, let's take the first article the lack of teachers in higher education the lack of teachers in higher education so guys this particular article will take with respect to the issues related to the education gs paper number 2 social justice just a minute yes so this particular article will be taking up with respect to the gs paper number 2 social justice now guys uh, uh see over the years we have seen this particular thing that infrastructural gaps in the education sector has impacted the improvement of education in india and if i give you some data in this particular regard according to the qs world university ranking survey not even a single university is there in the top 100 ranking we just got three institutions into the top 200 rankings okay uh, so point is that why the indian universities in indian higher educational institutions don't perform there are many reasons for that particular thing first reason is that basically gross expenditure on research and development is very much low in our higher educational institutions if i just give you a rough data just 0.7% of indian gdp is spent on to the r&d this is the data given by the niti aayog so expenditure on r&d is not there often the curriculum in educational institutions is outdated obsolete okay institutions often don't have autonomy to design their courses these are some of the reasons but one very big reason that why indian universities and higher education institutions don't provide good education it is because of the lack of teachers lack of the faculties so this particular dimension we are going to see today in this particular article now when we guys talk about the faculty shortages in the higher educational institutions such kind of shortage have existed since 1980s until now no solution has been taken up in this particular direction now india all the time talks about becoming the vishwa guru but how india can be the vishwa guru if the gurus are not there in the college in the universities okay so this 
actually impacts the aspiration of uh, basically this particular impacts the aspirations of the India. Now the first problem that why there are adequate adequate number of teachers are not there. The first and the very basic problem is that actually we don't even have a reliable data that how many teachers are there. We actually know teachers are sh in short but by how much they are short how much percentage of teachers are short we don't have that particular data then guys uh, basically in this particular direction some attempts have been taken up in the past for example what happened in 2009 in 2009 at that, that point of a time ministry of human resource development now by the way now the name of hrd has been changed to ministry of education so at that point of a time hrd established a task force to look into the problem of teacher shortages and at that point of a time this task force recommended that there needs to be creation of a standing mechanism standing mechanism is to be created which from time to time will monitor the number of sanctioned posts in the higher educational institutions and how many are actually filled and will provide the data on the faculty members and every institution is to be pro has to provide the how many faculties they have sanctioned and how many faculties are actually there in their educational institution all this information is to be uploaded at the website of every educational academic institution but see it has not actually happened has not been executed till now moreover time guys many number of times the higher educational institutions websites are very messy not containing the information even very clearly if they are there then the next issue that comes here is that guys that what actually is the case uh, this recommendation was given 10 years back nothing has happened government collects some data with respect to the higher educational institution it collects the data that is the all india survey on higher education aisha survey but there is another problem in the aisha survey all india survey on higher education number one this particular data is voluntary educational institutions they are free to give what data they want okay institutions are free to participate in it okay if they don't want they may not and second problem is that the data that is being given it is not verified by any independent agency so audit of that particular data also doesn't happens so this is actually a problem now further guys there is also one more issue that many number of times even in the aisha survey the higher educational institutions when they are giving data what they do they also pro provide the adjunct faculty members okay now basically when we talk about the educational institutions they have the permanent faculties and they have the ad hoc facility uh, faculties so basically the ad hoc faculties number are also added but as per the norms only the permanent faculties will be the faculties which will be deemed as the teachers or the faculties of that particular institution that is not being followed now the article has actually explained that in the higher educational institutions there are six types of the shortages of the teachers faculties now what are these six types of shortages let's discuss them one by one now uh, and guys this is actually a very comprehensive view on the shortage of the teaching faculties in higher educational institution first type of the shortages uh, when there are uh, basically there is a situation that now see in a one institution there will be the different different streams different different branches in engineering there will be different different branches for example so there are certain disciplines fine certain institutions are there in the country certain places are there in the country where there is oversupply in some of a discipline for example in the engineering college in delhi there might be an oversupply of the teachers but in humanity in in another college which is dealing with the humanities in uttar pradesh there is a lot of shortage so some institutions have oversupply depending on the type of discipline depending on the time of depending on their location and some places have the shortage so this is a kind of a uh, spatial uh, 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 on basically on the basis of the different different place we find these different patterns the next issue that comes here is that guys that some of the institution are not able to hire the faculty though they need but they are not able to hire the faculty why because of the financial issues they don't have finances okay money has not been granted to them so they want but they cannot hire there the shortage comes then third type of shortage this third type of shortage comes that where there is a need of hiring the faculty institution even has the money to hire the faculties but still they are not hiring the faculty there is an unwillingness why 
because they want they did not want to reduce their profits and this is the case into the private colleges private engineering colleges private medical colleges fine so they charge hefty fees they can pay they want the faculties but not hiring for not reducing their profits then the next the fourth kind of shortage is there basically guys what is happening what is happening uh, there are the reservations that have been given for the other backward classes scheduled cast scheduled tribes so because of these particular reservations many number of a times there are some very good qualified people okay who are not able to who are not able to get selected as the faculties or the teachers because of the reservation that has been there then next time there's a fifth kind of shortage that comes because of the unwillingness in the faculties themselves to get associated with some institutions a because that institution is not a premier institution b that institution might be into the rural areas and they need to relocate so they faculties are also not sometimes want to uh, are willing to with associated with certain kind of institutions and then this sixth kind of shortage emerges why uh, basically because the guys the sixth kind of a shortage where there is might not be an actual shortage might not be an actual shortage there are huge number of applicants that are there but guys uh, we you know the state of phds in india that how phds could be done the quality of phds that are there okay so people applicants are there people holding the phd degree could be there but basically uh, the people with uh, command or the competence over the subject are not there so the people have degrees but the competence or command is not there so we need to improve the quality of phd programs also at the indian universities so basically these are guys all the issues related to the shortage of the teachers faculties in the higher educational institution i hope guys that you have understood it and now moving to the next article what has india done to curb unnecessary hysterectomies okay now this particular article we will see with respect to gs paper number 2 as well as gs paper number 1 vulnerable sections of indian society and within that with respect to the issues of social justice we are going to see this particular article okay so let's take the article and uh, first of all guys let me tell you some of the basic things which you should know first of all uh, what is hysterectomies so hysterectomy it is a medical procedure to remove uterus from the body of a woman now why the uterus is removed because guys many number of times what happens women they face uh, they they face the problem of excessive bleeding um, menstrual bleeding there is there might be uh, uh, issues related to the lot of pain then there can be the issue of the fibroids or the cyst in the uterus so for that particular thing the uterus is completely removed now understand this particular thing guys that all the time it is not necessary that uterus has to be removed these conditions could be treated by medicine but doctor rather than treating these conditions by the medicine are recommending the removal of the uterus in this particular direction guys what happened few days back the supreme court has issued a directive that unnecessary hysterectomies should not be done and on the basis of the supreme court recommendation union government what it has done it has recommended certain guidelines to every state government that they have to follow in order to reduce the unnecessary hysterectomies okay so basically guys supreme court has observed that these unnecessary hysterectomies unnecessary removal of the uterus are being recommended by the hospitals particularly the women from the marginalized location women who don't have good education women who are not aware women from the tribal communities they are imposed with this particular kind of procedure okay now guys first of all uh, understand what are the reasons that these hysterectomies are being imposed number one is the uh, uh, number one is notion of earning profits from this particular procedure now how to earn the profit from this particular procedure now guys understand this thing government is running for example the ayushman bharat abhiyan under the ayushman bharat abhiyan 5 lakh rupees of health insurance is provided to per family and when we talk about guys the ayushman uh, ayushman bharat abhiyan okay under the ayushman bharat yojana 5 lakh rupees of assistance is provided for 1949 procedures and in that hysterectomy is included now understand this thing this procedure can be taken up 
आयुष्मान भारत अभियान इंसेंटिव कुड भी बेनिफिट सॉरी कुड भी टेकन अप इन प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल दे कुड भी टेकन अप इन पब्लिक हॉस्पिटल सो वेन द वेमेन आर अप्रोचिंग द प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल दे आर इंपोजिंग दिस ऑपरेशन सो दैट दे कैन गेट मनी रिमबर्स्ड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो टू मेक द प्रॉफिट दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोसीजर इज बींग इम्पोज ऑन दैम ओके देन सेकेंडली बेसिकली द कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स इन द अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द शुगर केन कटिंग इंडस्ट्री इन द शुगर केन कटिंग इंडस्ट्री दे आर इम्पोजिंग ऑन द वेमेन दिस प्रोसीजर वाई बिकॉज गाइज वेन अ वेमेन इज ऑन द पीरियड्स ड्यूरिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर थ्री फोर फाइव डेज ऑफ अ टाइम शी माइट नॉट बी एबल टू वर्क एट फुल एफिशियंसी एंड इफ द यूट्रस इज कंप्लीटली रिमूवड देन अकॉर्डिंग टू दैम द वेमेन्स एफिशियंसी कुड बी रिस्टोर्ड विच इज ऑब्वियसली वेरी विच इज ऑब्वियसली अ वेरी बैड एंड अ वेरी विच विच गोज अगेंस्ट द ह्यूमन राइट्स ऑफ द वेमेन बट इन दिस शुगर केन कटिंग इंडस्ट्री फाइन वूमलेस वेमेन्स वूमलेस वेमेन्स आर द वन हु आर मोर प्रेफर्ड वन फाइन दिस इज एन अगली साइड ऑफ अवर ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग वेमेन आर गोइंग फॉर दीज पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ प्रोसीजर्स एंड गाइज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन देर इज ऑल्सो अ टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन स्टडी फ्रॉम द गुजरात वेयर द वेमेन मैनी ऑफ दैम हैव एन इम्प्रेशन दैट द यूट्रेस डजेंट सर्व एनी पर्पज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द प्रेगनेंसी सो वंस वेमेन once women have entered into the menopause or once women even before the menopause in the reproductive age once women have given the birth to the number of desired children they go for these hysterectomies okay so basically the union government recently the um, recommendations that have been issued what they say they say number one that there needs to be the district level and state level and national level hysterectomy monitoring committees that should be established and these committees should monitor and collect the data on the age of the women who have been imp- who have been given the hysterectomy find mortality many women who f- f- take this particular surgical procedure they face the mortality also that thing occupation which type of women have been given this particular procedure okay so all these particular details are to be monitored from time to time by these district level state level and national level committees and this particular uh, on this particular data it needs to be seen that unnecessary procedures are not being imposed moreover these monitoring committees apart from taking the data has also to create awareness in the women fine as well as into the doctors that for, for example guys understand this particular thing bodily autonom uh, basically basically the women have been given information about the bodily anatomy every part every organ of our body has its own purpose uterus cannot just be a plug and play organ of your body that you have given the birth now you can remove it okay there can be the long term issues that can come so bodily anatomy the role of uterus hysterectomies when actually they are needed all these awareness is to be given to the women and medical practitioners also need to be sensitized in this particular direction okay now guys uh, one more thing is there that actually women voluntary also are taking taking up this procedure of hysterectomies fine for example in rural areas women look at hysterectomies as a way of increasing their productive work because then uh, they uh, when these women will become wombless for okay, case so, so the menstrual pain menstrual periods all these things can be get rid of which is often considered as unnecessary okay so this is something that is going on now as per the recent uh, as per the recent studies conducted by the civil societies it have been pow- found that largest number of the hysterectomies are being taken up in the private hospitals in the state of bihar chatisgarh rajasthan okay and here we find that on tribal women large number of these procedures are being imposed why because obvious reasons are there that the awareness and education is very low there now guys if we see this particular thing it also becomes a concern for gs paper number 4 ethics fine because in ethics we have the applied ethics and in applied ethics we have biomedical ethics now when we talk about doctors doctors are bound by the hippocratic oath in which they take an oath that all the actions that they will be taken up in the line of their duty will be oriented towards the welfare of the communities but Uh, imposing unnecessary surgical procedure just to make the profit it becomes an ethical issue for the medical practitioners it violates the right to health of the women it violates the bodily integrity of the women 
even when women don't completely know about the repercussions the informed consent of the women is auto getting also getting violated article 21 which is the most fundamental one is getting violated by these particular kind of procedures so on them there needs to be a control that has to be curbed fine so this is guys all about this particular article i hope that you have understood this particular issue and now we will be moving to the next article understanding the violence faced by the healthcare professionals in india okay so basically guys uh, this particular article again we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 2 issues related to the health issues related to the health now basically uh, when we talk about the medical professionals be it the doctors nurses paramedic staff okay they are our front line workers and often the medical professionals they have been compared with the god on earth because they are the one who save crucial lives in the crucial times they work for long hours okay working for the welfare of the humanity but sometimes what happens there are attacks that are committed on to doctors many number of a times by the disgruntled family members who have faced the loss of some loved one now that see certain things guys i wanted to tell you guys here that in the in the outburst of an emotion when a family have lost a family member they can outburst that frustration on the doctor but doctor most of the time has nothing to do in this particular capacity but when the attacks are happening on the doctor it discourages their morale okay and often they become hesitant to take the call of the duty so this is a very serious issue for which the cognizance should be taken up so now we are going to discuss this issue recently guys also what had happened one of a doctor in the kerala died while she was attacked okay while she was attacked by the family uh, while she was attacked by some of the people in the hospital so since then this issue has become very much important now guys understand this thing that according to the data given by the journal of post graduate medicine it is said that in developing countries more than 50% of doctors they have faced the patient led verbal or physical abuse okay and in india also the number is very high where verbal or physical abuse is seen now guys when we talk about these physical or verbal abuse it also has a particular pattern for example most of the time it is directed against the junior doctor or the resident doctor and these attacks get reduced when the senior doctors are concerned so most of the time they are just being made on compounders on nurses on paramedics on junior doctors resident doctors okay and these attacks are more probable in the high stake settings for example in emergency wing in icu okay or in the department where the patients who have the mental compromised mental faculties in these areas there are more probability of the attacks on doctors now basically guys it has also been provided that when the attack on doctors is concerned in 82.2% of the cases attack on the doctor is done by either by the family members or the relative of the patient now this is given by the uh, this data is given by a paper that was published in the plos 1 fine a medical journal and then further guys it has also been provided that what are the reasons for which the attacks are made on the family members reason number 1 actual or perceived deterioration of the condition okay some uh, a patient's condition might get deteriorate uh, the relatives they think that it is because of the negligence of the doctor or the relatives they think that there is the doctor who are not concerned apathy is there okay apathy means a sense of indifference okay these are the reasons then high payment dues or lot money has been charged after that long waiting hours are there okay waiting times are there because of these reasons the attacks are being made but actually doctors are not not are not responsible in many of these things fine that is a entirely a different issue okay moreover also the studies have shown this thing that the female medical professionals with the lesser year of experience they face more risk of getting attacked they face more risk of getting attacked now most of the times even doctors are not reporting these particular cases to the police because uh, they have because of this particular notion that much will not happen by reporting these particular cases now guys uh, because of these particular attacks it has been seen that the doctors they developed a post traumatic stress disorder they developed anxiety they developed a depression and they might not be able to perform their duty 
adequately efficiently already in india there is a lot of deficiency in terms of the numbers of doctor per popul uh, doctors compared to the population now if i give you the data so in india the doctor patient ratio is 1 is to 854 there is one doctor uh, one is to 854 but it actually includes the ayurveda and homeopathy practitioners also find which are very huge in number so when we talk about the modern medicine their number is actually be less fine so this is the issue guys that is there and doctors often decide to operate in now because of these attacks doctors they don't want to operate in the small hospitals they want to operate into the resource abundant hospitals in this capacity often they are not willing to take the duties in the rural hospitals in the rural settings and ultimately it impact the rural healthcare it impacts the rural healthcare now one thing that state govern that that the state that the governments should need to take care is that government can think that there should be availability and accessibility of the medicines availability and accessibility of test financial aid some health insurance kind of program for example ayushman bharat abhiyan it has substantially reduced the burden of the families so such kind of things are really to be provided so that the stress of the families is reduced okay so instead of leaving them to hold their physician responsible okay these things can help the next thing is that the healthcare professionals should also work on their communication skills and there needs to be meticulous documentation for justifying every step that they have taken up now understand this particular thing guys that often doctors it is seen by the people that they have a sense of apathy in a difference they are they fail to show the empathy it is because of the communication skills issues then after that thing every hospital also need to ensure that there are adequate number of counselors in the hospital that will console the patients relatives in the time of distress okay so these counselors can help a lot in this particular the capacity find these counselors can also translate the language sometime language barriers are there find people let's say let's say doctor they are posted from such parts of the country where they might let's say not be able to communicate well in the hindi and the relatives they speak hindi so there the translators can help find counselors can remove the communication gap okay now here we have the case study of the kerala government also now recently what has happened kerala have moved to amend the kerala healthcare service person and healthcare service institution act now by amending this kerala healthcare service persons act kerala is making more stringent if any attack is made on to the medical practitioner so basically what they are doing enhanced jail terms are provided up to 3 years in case if any abuse of the doctor has been done fines up to 50000 rupees are being imposed on to the people who are guilty moreover government is also coming out with the mechanism of a, a time bound speedy disposal of the cases where the attack on the doctors have happened so a time bound disposal will be done so this is one step that has been taken by the kerala government and it will provide an added layer of confidence to the doctors to do their duty now the other state governments can also follow this particular example okay so that is all guys about this particular article i hope that you have understood this article with all the backgrounds fine and all such things now moving to next article moving to the next article faster stronger india must use its super computers beyond weather forecast now this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 3 science and technology gs paper number 3 science and technology and with respect to the prelims also we can see this particular article now what the article is actually talking about so the article guys is talking about the recent step where india has decided to uh, uh, install a newly new updated state of the art super computer now first of all guys understand this particular thing the word super computer is not is a, a Is, is a super relative term the word super computer could mean different for the different times for the different countries for example 20 30 years back what were the super computer today they are your laptops today they are your gaming pcs okay so super computer is just a computer which have huge computational capacity and guys when we talk about the super computers we track their capacity in terms of the flops for example floating points operation per second how many operations how many operations a computer can do in one second 
fine we measure that speed by the flops and in terms of flops we see the computers even the super computers i will be coming on this thing just in a minute again now india have decided to install a newly upgraded super computer it will be a high performance computing system which will be installed with the help of the french company that is atos now guys already indian government has signed a memorandum of understanding with atos to install the super computer now this super computer will be having the capacity of 18 petaflops it will have the capacity of 18 petaflops now guys one petaflop one petaflop refers to 1000 trillion flops okay one flops is floating point operation per second okay then one petaflop is equal to 1000 trillion flops so 18 petaflops means 18000 trillion flops of computer it will have huge capacity now guys when we talk about this super computer it will be uh, it, it it will be established at the indian institute of tropical meteorology pune and national center for medium range weather forecasting noida okay now guys uh, basically uh, when we talk about these facilities right now they are hosting the present most powerful super computer that is mihir and pratyush right now they have the mihir and pratyush now it will be upgraded okay now what will be the name of this new super computer it has not been announced by the government till now now what is the need of the super computers first of all guys the super computers are needed for for running the sophisticated weather models now understand this thing the uh, imd fine institute of Met uh, basic indian meteorological department it is predicting cyclones it is predicting the uh, weather of let's say 10 days in advance now how that particular thing is to be done for that thing a lot of factors are to be taken up for example the temperature the temperature humidity incoming solar radiation cloud cover so a lot of factors are to be taken and then the historical trends also have to be seen that what happened 50 years back when the same conditions were there so hundreds of years of data is to be compared fine then present parameters are to be taken and on the basis of complex mathematical calculations the predictions are made see the more sophisticated supercomputers we have more advanced predictions with respect to the upcoming cyclones can be made fine and by that particular thing guys these advanced supercomputing facilities can also help us in the reduction of the disaster risk such as a cyclones so we need it but apart from the weather forecast we also need the supercomputers for uh, understanding the protein biology now guys understand this thing that every protein uh, every protein type of protein plays an important role in the body understanding their makeup okay in drug discovery okay in aerospace modeling fine everywhere we need the supercomputing application so this is guys that is the issue now guys when we talk about the supercomputers it is also used as a medallion or it is also used as a, a show of thing by the countries because every country want to show that we have the most fastest supercomputer and for that thing there is a top 500 project report also that is published fine uh, published which pro, which uh, shows that what are the 500 most powerful supercomputers that is there now guys when we talk about the india india uh, has a pretty much advanced super computers and in the top 100 we come all, uh, already and with the installation of this 18 petaflops super computer we will be able to improve our rank and more importantly is will be able to do more accurate weather forecast other applied applications could be there now when we talk about the fastest super computer right now so right now the fastest super computer it is the frontier cray system at oak ridge national lab in usa and this super computer has a speed of 1 exaflop 1 exaflop means 1000 petaflops we are now installing 18 but they have 1000 petaflop super computer already okay so this is guys all about uh, this particular article and now we'll move to the next article from master of the roster to the master of all judges okay now this particular article will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 issues related to the judiciary issues related to the judiciary now before going on in this particular direction guys just a minute before going on in this particular direction i just wanted to i just wanted to uh, tell you some of the basic information okay so guys uh, understand this particular thing that as uh, see 
सपोज देर इज अ पर्सन मिस्टर सपोज देर इज अ पर्सन मिस्टर ए एंड मिस्टर ए इज अक्यूज दैट ही हैज डन अ क्राइम लेट से ही हैज कमिटेड अ मर्डर नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर मिस्टर ए कुड बी टेकन अप इन कस्टडी दिस मिस्टर ए कुड बी टेकन अप इन द कस्टडी एंड मीन वाइल पुलिस एंड मीन वाइल पुलिस हैव टू फाइल अ चार्ज शीट मीन वाइल द पुलिस हैव टू फाइल अ चार्ज शीट पुलिस विल इन्वेस्टिगेट विल कलेक्ट द एविडेंसिस which will prove that whether mr a has committed the crime or not so they will do investigation they will collect the evidence okay and on the basis of that the charge sheet is to be filed now according to the criminal procedure code crpc there is a particular time limit that has been given to the enforcement agencies within which they need to complete their investigation okay and in this capacity understand this thing there are the 90 days of the time that is given if the if if the crime is punishable with the death life imprisonment or imprisonment of 10 years so severe type of crimes they are 90 days timeline is given and then the 60 days time is given when the other offenses are concerned in many in very rare kind of a cases this timeline can be extended but usually it is just 60 and 90 days within which the investigation is to be completed now see if the police is not able to complete their investigation and if they are not able to put forward the evidence against the accused then this accused person is given the default bail this accused person is given a default bail okay he is to be released from the jail she he or she cannot be kept for more period for more time in the jail now guys basically what happened few days back there was a judgment given by the supreme court few days back a judgment was given by the supreme court and this judgment was ritu chhabadia versus union of india and this judgment was a very progressive judgment in this particular judgment it was provided that under trial people who are under trial under trial is any person who is into the jail on whom the case is going on but his crime has not been proved so it has been provided that under trial they have a right to be released on default bail in the event of investigation remaining incomplete okay if investigation is not done in that time okay now see main number of times investigation agencies they need more time this the seek an extension that okay we have completed 90 days we were not able to do it give us more 90 days it this extension is given but here in this ritu chhabadia case supreme court has said very clearly that they cannot be kept in detention extensions and extension cannot be given okay very good judgment okay now guys what has happened what has happened uh basically uh, it held the right to be released on the bail will not be extinguished on the mere filing of preliminary charge sheet okay you have to file the final charge sheet it has also been provided that accused right to seek default bail would be terminated only upon completion on the investigation within statutory time limit okay now what happened after this particular judgment now first of all what this point means it means that only if you have completed the investigation in the time then that particular person can be denied the default bail otherwise cannot be denied the default bail he has to be given the bail now after this particular judgment what happened basically the union of india union of india asked the chief justice of india that you please ensure that this particular judgment is not being followed that this judgment is not being followed and actually what happens the chief justice of india entertained this recall petition recall application recall application is when the union government request please ask the other courts that they should not entertain this particular judgment then what happened the supreme court passed this interim order and directed the other courts to decide bail applications without relying on the ritu chhabde judgment the high court the supreme court they were said that you decide judgment you decide the bail issue without relying on the ritu chhabadia this was something that was done okay so basically what actually had happened by this particular way the chief justice of india has stayed on the decision without putting a formal stay on the verdict okay a formal stay on the verdict has not been done but now this particular thing will not be entertained okay this is a additional mechanism that has been introduced or has been adopted by the supreme court fine where what it can do few of the judgments it can just casually it, it can just directly ask the courts to not to consider okay this is a kind of a new mechanism that has come now guys understand this particular thing it is the article says this thing that as per the constitution of india all the judges of the supreme court are equal in terms of their judicial power and in their terms but actually chief justice of india enjoys the special powers for example chief justice of india uh, is the master of roster 
what do we mean by the master of roster master of roster means that he can constitute the benches okay he can decide that which judge which sit will sit on which particular bench okay which cases are to be given to the larger bench all these matters are decided by the supreme court it means that the uh, sorry all these matters are decided by the chief justice of india because he is the master of roster it's fine but he is also regarded as the first among equals okay this is something that is there now the question that comes guys here is that this particular order raises some valid concerns what is the valid concerns it is that if the government is not pleased with any decision by any supreme court bench what they can do they can directly go to the chief justice of india and ask chief justice of india that they basically that the chief justice of india should ask the courts to not to refer to that particular judgment so in this particular capacity what will happen the chief justice of india becomes even more powerful institution because of this particular thing it happens that actually the judgment has been passed but the judgment will still stay as null fine these kind of a things can happen so basically guys it is a kind of a thing which should not be taken up okay there needs to be limit to this particular kind of a thing so this is guys all about this particular article that has come and now we'll move to the next article the indelible imprint of the fifth estate in karnataka now this article guys will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 the role of civil societies role of civil societies now uh, recently we have seen that the karnataka assembly elections got concluded and basically the article is talking about that when the karnataka assembly elections were going on many political parties tried to divide the state on religious lines they tried to divide the state on communal lines on uh, caste lines and on many other kind of things but the civil societies had played a very important role here now civil societies what happened they did not they did not created alliance with any political party they did not try to deface any political party they did not tried to uh, question directly the credentials of any political party but what happened civil societies approximately 102 associations they come together under the edelu karnataka campaign that is wake up karnataka campaign what they did they did not argued with the public they did not campaigned against any political party against any political ideology but they asked the people to wake up that you should make your choice on the basis of your electoral benefit you should see the manifesto of the political parties you should ask the relevant questions and just on the basis of the development on the basis of real issues you should give the vote so new vistas a posit new opportunities for positive politics secularism peace developmental politics this particular new flair was added by the activism of the civil societies and in a direct and indirect way they are supporting the true democracy constitutional values and are also helping in bringing the unity of people by asking them to not to get divided on the communal lines then guys second important role that these civil societies had played is that see many number of a times what happens the political parties deliberately they float many of the candidates so that they can cut the vote share of the uh, vote share of the opponents okay for example guys that suppose mr x has a lot of appeal so there will be a lot of many other people will be uh, uh, will be asked to stand in the elections so that some vote share can be cut down now guys what happened these civil societies they met 49 candidates and negotiated them convinced them that you anyhow your winability is not there you are just being floated as a dummy and they were asked and they got convinced and they withdrew their contest uh, they withdrew their contest okay this is something that has happened so basically guys here we can see that the karnataka should be considered as a model for power of people's democracy and karnataka example should awake the civil societies across the countries and these civil societies can educate people okay and the criminalization of politics that is going on religious and communal manipulation of people happened into the backdrop of elections all these things can be taken uh, can be reduced by the civil society activism as they have done into the karnataka okay so when whenever defections are engineered to defeat definite electoral victors fine may number of times defections are being done may number of times manipulations are being done just to get the power these things are needed to be explained to the people so that the people can make the meaningful choices so this is guys all about this particular article now moving to the next article the erdogan victory a triumph for ottoman glory 
now guys understand this thing to be very frank this particular article doesn't contains much of the relevant substance vis-a-vis -vis the exam is concerned this article what it is talking about this article talks about the may 29 when the election results have came so basically it says that the may 29 it is important because it was the 570 anniversary of the capture of istanbul now in the old times the istanbul was called as the constantinople so it was captured by the ottoman sultan in 1453 so 29 may 2023 marks the 570 years and again we see this thing that the turkey's modern day sultan that is tayyip erdogan has begun a fresh term of the president okay so he has begun the fresh term as a president now basically guys under the erdogan a lot of criticism has come that the erdogan's policies are very far rightist policies okay he has uh, basically taken a many number of times so communal stands in the international politics for example guys when arctic when india diluted the article 370 of the indian constitution then also on the communal lines turkey has supported pakistan and had stood against the india so basically it has been said that as the recep uh, tayyip erdogan has again win the presidential elections the same policies of the turkey will continue see turkey when we talk about it it is a nato partner since 1952 and right now this russia ukraine war is going on and entire nato is supporting the ukraine so the russia uh, turkey's stand in this russia ukraine war will be the same turkey actually in a recent days had uh, in a recent years have expanded its strategic ties strategic horizons it is reaching to mediterranean north africa west asia caucasus central asia horn of africa find all the places it is reaching it is increasing its power okay it is also building ties with the countries such as saudi arabia uae fine so these policies will continue these policies will continue as we see in the times to come okay however guys no need to go too much in deep in this particular article fine now moving isro's gslv rocket takes navigation satellite into transfer orbit successfully okay so basically transfer orbit okay is the orbit from which the satellites are transferred to the geosynchronous orbit or any such orbit now what has actually happened guys just on monday isro that is indian space research organization has successfully placed nvs01 navigation satellite in the geosynchronous transfer orbit now there was an earlier flight also that was made to place this satellite into the orbit but it failed and now again this particular attempt has been made and this time it was successful now when we talk about this satellite that is the nvs01 satellite this particular satellite is the uh, it, this way there will be a series of five satellites okay nbs series there will be five satellites and this nvs01 is the first satellite now this particular satellite it has been uh, it has been built by the isro's ur rao satellite center bangalore and this particular satellite guys will be helping in the navigation purposes guys you might be knowing on that right now we are running the navic that is the uh, navic that is a navigation with indian constellation now right now there are the navic satellites that are established fine which will helping in the navigation which will be helping or fulfilling the need of gps that is the positioning system global positioning system so for gps we have the navic satellites okay and it provides the uh, it provides the uh, it, it, it provides the information for the civilian navigation and defense nav navigation for the mainland India and 15 kilometers beyond the Indian borders. So for navigation, we are now coming with our own GPS that is a Navic and Navic satellites helps us in providing the GPS related information. Now what has happened? This NVS series of satellite, it will augment the Navic satellites so that more precise navigation data is there and they also have more sophisticated L1 band signal okay which will further be strengthening in the gps capabilities of india okay and one indigenous country made atomic clock has also been flown on nvs01 so this is guys all about it now performance review how parliament has functioned till now okay so basically guys here we have some graphs by the way this text is nothing but the text also is just uh, giving these particular uh, graphs information nothing more is there so basically here we see the performance of the parliament now number of sittings in the last 70 uh, in the last 17 lok sabha including the ongoing session so number of sittings are being provided here that how many sittings have happened 
okay the first second third fourth fifth so till the 17th now here we see that the number of sittings have actually not been that much high then second the number of bills passed by the each lok sabha so here we see this particular thing fine in terms of the bill also much bills have not been passed percent of bill referred to the committees now see it's a 17th lok sabha has been criticized a lot because many of the bills are not being referred to the joint committees select committee so therefore it is being said that the time spent on deliberation has went really down has went really down okay this is something that has happened just a minute fine yes okay so these are uh, the some of the data that we have here okay so uh, guys uh, just the data has been given beyond that nothing much for explanation has been given the time spent on budget discussion in hours okay so 2023 we see 16 hours were spent the time is also very much low in this particular capacity fine so you can see that in 1950s and 60s so much time was being spent on the budget days to election of deputy speaker now this is a concern that deputy speaker is not being elected for a very considerable period of time and 1390 days okay then the time spent on budget discussion adjournment motion all these different paragraphs etc have been given so basically the performance of the parliament has not been very much good now understand this thing uh, you are not required to see the absolute data uh, but these uh, graphs actually guys if you want you can make for the examination purpose also okay fine now moving on guys and uh, saying this article un peacekeeping mission india to train women from asia okay so basically guys un peacekeeping forces are the military forces the forces are contributed by the different different countries and these un peacekeeping forces are installed on those countries which are facing a kind of a crisis the mandate of peacekeeping force is not to attack the mandate of peacekeeping force is to ensure the order now india had announced recently that india will be training the un peacekeeping women forces from the asian countries okay now when we talk about the asian countries guy in asian fine association of southeast asian nation As asian we have 10 countries myanmar thailand malaysia singapore vietnam laos cambodia philippines brunei and indonesia so these are the 10 asian countries now guys india has decided that india will train 20 peace speaker peacekeepers that is two peacekeepers from ev from every country to in total 20 peacekeepers would be trained by india okay there will also be the table top exercise for the women officers from the asean so that they can take the challenge of the un peacekeeping forces moreover when we talk about the un peacekeeping india has contributed till now the largest troops in the us peacekeeping 275000 have participated in 159 uh, have participated in, uh, in 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 multiple operations and up till now 159 indian army soldiers have lost their lives one of the highest fatalities india have faced okay so this is the contribution of india in installing the global peace and now the main aspect is question for today so question reads it is a civil society that makes india pluralistic providing for alternatives beyond the ritualistic game of electoralism in this context highlight the role of civil society in india so guys this will be a gs paper number 2 question for 10 marks so that is all guys about it and with this we come to an end to the today's session so guys i hope that you have liked it so guys if you have liked please do hit the like button and please do comment and i really want to thank everyone who take an effort to like the videos and to leave the comments thank you so much guys thank you